16, 17, 18, evaluating an exponential function that models a real-world situation. On these ones, they are going to set up the equation for you, but later on, we're going to have to set them up ourselves. So just to explain where we got all of this stuff, it says if the rate of inflation is 3.9% per year, the future price, P of T in dollars, of a certain item can be modeled by the following exponential function, where T is the number of years from today. So. $3,000 is actually the price that they, or what they invested or put in there. Um, the 3.9%, because I'm gaining value, I have 100%, the full amount I invested, plus the interest. So 1 plus 3.9%, and then it's going to be to the T years. So what is the current price? Well, I could tell from looking at this that the current price is going to be $3,000. But if we were going to calculate that, we would say $3,000, 1.039 to the zero power. Current price means I haven't spent any time yet. So anything to the zero power is equal to 1. 1 times 3,000, 3,000 is my current price. If I want to then calculate the price 8 years from now, I'm going to do my 3,000, 1 plus 0, 3, 9, to the eighth power. So on my calculator, I'm going to use the caret key. And I'm just going to put it in like that, make that look like 3,000. <laughs> so plugging that into my calculator, 3,000 parenthesis, 1.039 carat to the eighth power, close my parenthesis, round my answer to the nearest dollar. I'm getting 4074.2, so I don't have to round it up. So eight years from now, it's $4,074. So started out at 3,000, my inflation was 3.9%. So after eight years, it's $4,074. Number 17 then. It says the radioactive substance uranium-240 has a half-life of 14 hours. The amount of the sample of uranium-240 remaining in grams after T hours is given by the following exponential function. So what they started out with was 1,200 grams. I'm doing half-life. I could put 50%. It's maintaining 50% of its value or half its value every 14 hours. So for one Half-life, it would be 14 over 14. 14 fourteenths is the same thing as one half-life. In this case, we're going to do 11 hours and 60 hours. So we're going to do 1,200, one-half, to the... And here's where we have to be careful on the calculator. We have to put parentheses around that fraction because otherwise it would do the to the power and then divide. Following the order of operations, we do exponents before dividing. So we're going to do 11 fourteenths. And you can either use the fraction button, or if it's easier, the division button. Either one works, the fraction or division. So in this case, we're not going to quite do one half life. Half of 1,200 is 600, so we should have more than 600 left if we get it punched in correctly, just to kind of estimate to know where we're at. So. 1,200 parenthesis, my half-life to the 11 14th. So 11 divided by 14 or 11 fraction 14. It's easier for me to hit the division. So I came up with 696.0 and so 696 rounding to the nearest gram. I'm going to do the same thing after 60 hours. Now, 60 hours means I'm going to have more than one half-life because for every 14 hours it cuts it in half, cuts it in half, cuts it in half again. So, 1,200, my half-life, 1 divided by 2 or 1 fraction 2, to the 60 divided by 14. 
So 1,200 parentheses, do my half-life to the 60 divided by 14, and I get 61.5, so I have to round that up to 62. So after 11 hours, I have 696. After 60 hours, I only have 62 left. And number 18, going to be doing the same kind of thing. They're doing half-life again. The radioactive substance cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years, so every 30 years it cuts it in half. The amount AFT in grams of a sample of cesium-137 remaining after two years is given by the following exponential function. Again, here we're starting with 621 grams. We're doing the half-life, and then we have the time over 30 years because that's what our half-life is every 30 years. So after 20 years, we're not quite going to do one half-life because the half-life is 30 years. 621, my one-half to the 20 out of 30. So 621 times one-half to the 20 out of 30. And I get 391.2. So 391 would be my answer to the nearest grant. Right? We didn't quite do a half life. We got a little more than a half left. After 50 years, that means we did more. We did one half life plus a little longer. So we should be more than half. So 621 half life and 50 out of 30. And if I put that in, I get 195.6, so I round it off to 196. Didn't quite do two half-lives, but one half-life would cut it in half. I'd be at 310 roughly, and then another half would half-life would cut that in half. So 195.6 rounds off to 196.